This video is sponsored by Audible. Go to audible.com slash company man or text company man to 500 500 to get a free audiobook and a 30 day trial. All right, all right, enough of the intro. I'm excited to talk about some Beanie Babies. Now, there's a group of people watching this that are aware of the Beanie Baby fad, but may not know the specifics or realize just how big it was. I imagine the majority of viewers are in that group. I was in it myself until recently. But there's also a group watching this that are hearing about this fad for the first time here. Maybe you only know Beanie Babies for what they are today, or maybe you've never even heard of them. This is the group that I'm excited for because you're about to watch one of the most surprising videos of your entire life. And at many points, you're going to find it hard to believe, but I promise it's all true. When I say Beanie Baby, I'm referring to these little stuffed animal plush toys filled with similar stuff that you would find in a bean bag. Well, in the 1990s, these things were so popular, people would wait in line for hours to buy them. And they weren't just for kids. In fact, most of the time, they weren't for kids. The adults were the ones buying them for themselves. Many times as an investment, of all things. Savings accounts, 401ks, people were passing on those because they thought these little stuffed animals were a better investment. People thought these were so valuable they would go on eBay and buy one for hundreds, in some cases thousands of dollars, and feel like they walked away with a bargain. I told you, it's hard to believe, but I promise there's no exaggeration. In the late 90s, everything I described was very common. But I want to take a step back and talk about this guy, Ty Warner. He's the guy behind the whole thing. Every Beanie Baby comes with a heart-shaped tag that says Ty on it, referring to him. He started and fully owns the company that makes Beanie Babies. He actually invented the Beanie Baby and I'd say is mostly responsible for the success of the Beanie Baby. So when talking about Beanie Babies, we should be talking about Ty Warner. He was a toy salesman that lost his job because he was trying to sell his own toys alongside the toys he was supposed to be selling. As you might expect, the company didn't like that. To my understanding, after he lost his job, he took off to Italy to hang out with some friends for three years. Which sounds odd to me, but good thing he did because that's where he got the idea that led to the Beanie Baby. The official Beanie Babies were first launched a few years later in 1993 and really weren't very successful in the beginning. I think their eventual success can be broken down into two parts. First the initial success, and then the all-out explosion. Let's just try to look at this for what it is. Forget the fad aspect of it in the overinflated secondary market, just look at it as a toy. It's very similar to all the other plush toys out there, with one big exception. It's understuffed, which would sound bad in most cases, but in this case, it was a big positive. It allows you to better move them around and shape the way they're sitting and lying down. It doesn't sound like much, but it's not easy to separate your stuffed animal from all the others, and Ty Warner found a way to do it. The store owners liked it because it allowed them to display them in creative ways that would entice the buyers. Customers liked it because it's a whole new way to play with your stuffed animal. Not to mention the attractive designs and unique tags, and on top of that, they were the same price, if not cheaper, than their competitors. It was about five $5. Personally, I'd say not a bad way to spend $5, and $5 for one of these I'm sure we could all understand. The part that's still a little unclear is why people are spending hundreds of dollars. Why is this worth a few hundred dollars? That's the real question here. And the answer goes right back to Ty Warner. Now, I know by a lot of these pictures, he looks like a lovable toy maker, but I would describe him as being a little sketchy. A bit of an odd person. He's very mysterious and reclusive. You wouldn't find many video clips or interviews with him, but you can also describe him as a genius and a perfectionist. There's stories of him spending hours positioning the Beanie Babies in the exact right position to take a promotional photo. It was that perfectionism and this little elephant named Peanut that likely provided the spark that led to the Beanie Baby explosion. Before they had any popularity at all, this elephant was offered in a deep royal blue color. After a few months, Ty Warner, for whatever reason, 
felt the need to make it a different color. He changed it from the darker blue to a much lighter blue. That meant that there was only a very limited supply of the dark blue elephant, and any collector of anything can tell you a limited production run like this is the kind of thing that could become very valuable. It looks like the whole peanut the elephant becoming valuable thing was really just an unplanned side effect of Ty's perfectionism. But he saw exactly what was happening, and that's where the genius takes over. He repeated it many times. He would release a new Beanie Baby, and then a few months later announce it was going to be retired at the end of the month. So everyone would try to figure out which store was selling that particular one and go wait in line to get it. Some people weren't fortunate enough to get it straight from the stores, so they searched for it on eBay. And like I said, in many, many cases, paid an absurd amount of money to get it. I mean, what were they supposed to do? Just pass it up? This thing was going to be retired, never to be made again. You saw what that did to the value of Peanut. And Ty just kept doing it, releasing new ones, retiring old ones, and sending everyone into a frenzy each time. And yes, it's manipulative. I don't think it's possible to create such demand for little stuffed animals without being manipulative. And here's a couple of things that'll help me express just how big this fad was. At one point, 10% of all eBay sales were for Beanie Babies. That's crazy to think about. And also, there's this famous photo of a couple dividing their Beanie Babies collection in divorce court. And it's not just the two being petty. The Beanie Babies held so much value that it was a legitimate concern who would get what. This fad was big. Definitely the biggest one I've covered. And in my opinion, almost came to a perfect end. A little before the end of the millennium, they announced that Beanie Babies were done. Just as they announced the retirement of so many before, they announced that they were retiring every one of them. But abruptly this week, the makers of Beanie Babies, Ty Incorporated, announced over the internet that it's over. No more Beanie Babies. No, no more Quackers the Duck or Pinky the Flamingo. The company says every last one will be retired. But soon after that, they had a change of heart and decided to leave it up to the people. They had everyone vote on whether or not they should stop making them. And I'm sure you can guess what the results were. Naturally, everyone voted to keep them going, and the whole thing is viewed as being a desperate attempt to keep the demand high. See, before any announcement, the fad was declining. As all fads do, it was coming to an end. You can only retire so many Beanie Babies before people start to catch on and just don't care anymore. This isn't confirmed in any way, but I think it's pretty obvious this was their final attempt to keep their fad running a little longer, or at least milk a little more out of it. And it didn't work very well. Even most of the people caught up in the fad at the time saw this for what it was. I don't think they ever really planned on leaving, but wouldn't that have been a great way to go? Ever since then, Beanie Babies continue to fade out more and more. They're still around today, but the demand for them today doesn't even compare to the demand in the 90s. The Peanut the Elephant thing started in 1996, I view that as the start of the fad. The big retiring all Beanie Babies stunt was set to happen at the end of the 90s, I think it's fitting to call that the unofficial end of the fad. Today, they're all pretty much worthless. In the 90s, people wouldn't hesitate to spend thousands of dollars on a single Beanie Baby, yet today they'd be lucky to get $10 for it. There's a list on eBay of the 10 most valuable Beanie Babies. Number one, of course, is Peanut. They value it between $1,500 and $5,000, and everything else is just a steep decline from there. There's one bear that people still perceive to be very valuable, but it just isn't. In 1997, Princess Diana died, a terrible tragedy and easily the biggest news at the time in the UK and the US. And if you notice, it happened right in the middle of this fad. They released a special bear to honor her. It had a white rose on it, and the proceeds went to her memorial fund. Naturally, everyone thought this was going to skyrocket in value. It did not. I think this article from Vanity Fair perfectly describes today's lack of demand for this particular bear and really Beanie Babies in general. They spoke to a toy buyer about how everyone is trying to sell him Beanie Babies. He says, Honestly, it's the Princess Diana Beanie Baby. Everyone brings it in because they think it's worth a quarter of a million dollars, adding that they sell the bear for three to five dollars when they do manage to move them. There's a lot of people that come in with them trying to sell them. No one's ever trying to buy them. 
only sell them. What a perfect expression of the current market for Beanie Babies. It brings up some ethical questions regarding Ty Warner and his Beanie Babies. He knew what he was doing. He knew the value of those toys wouldn't hold. Was he doing something wrong by creating all this hype? Remember, he was only getting the $5 for the initial sales, not the thousands from the eBay sales. But it was those sales that were fueling his sales. The whole thing was just a big mess at this point. Whether Ty Warner was an unethical person or a genius businessman is up to you to decide. There's great arguments for both. By the end of it, he was one of the richest men in the world. At the height of his wealth in 2002, Forbes determined he was worth $6 billion and was placed number 65 on their list. Today, he's dropped down to number 887 on the list, actually tied with Oprah Winfrey, so I'd say he's still getting by. Remember, he's 100% owner of the company. All the profits from Beanie Baby sales went straight to him back in the 90s during the craze and still today, though they're much lower today. If you are looking for more evidence to prove that he may be a little unethical, I recommend you search some of the more recent news on Ty Warner. In the 1990s, he put almost $100 million in a Swiss bank account and failed to report it to the IRS. He earned interest on that money over the years and never paid any taxes on it. It was all illegal. They finally caught him a few years ago. He received minor penalties and nothing really came of it, but I think something like this speaks to his character. Someone who willfully lies to the government to save an amount of money that has to be insignificant to them, I don't approve. It just seems like these Beanie Babies have turned into such a dark subject. It's meant to be a fun little toy, but all the circumstances surrounding it have just ruined it. You could say it was their own fault, but the fact remains that so many people lost money from them. There was manipulation, and now tax evasion. With most fads, you can look back and laugh at yourself or remember it as a fun time, but with Beanie Babies, I don't think as many people have those happy memories. These had actual consequences. I'd say the world would have been better off without it. Ugh. <sighs> I'm sorry to bring this video to such a depressing turn. Here's a picture of a cute little crab. His name is Claude. That should help lift it up a bit. Let me know in the comments if you are one of those people that are hearing about Beanie Babies for the first time. And did the video turn out to be as shocking as I predicted? And if you were in that other group that was somewhat familiar with them, the fad was a little bigger than you thought, right? And let me know your thoughts on Ty Warner, genius businessman or evil manipulator or both. If we can pull any good news from this, it's that if this video made you want to go out and buy a Beanie Baby, you could probably afford it. Now, Claude the Crab is one of the more valuable ones, so maybe not him, but there's still plenty to choose from. So any other thoughts on Beanie Babies or anything else from this video, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. If you're interested in hearing more about Beanie Babies, there's a great book called The Great Beanie Baby Bubble, Mass Delusion and the Dark Side of Cute. And through today's sponsor, Audible, you can download it for free. Summer is right around the corner, and if you're like me, you like to get outside and enjoy the sun, and why not listen to an audiobook while you do it? I listen to them while I'm at the park working on those free throws. Couldn't do that with a physical book. Audible has an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy. It's not a streaming service or rental service. You actually own the books. And they're giving you your first one for free, along with a 30-day free trial. Just go to audible.com slash companyman or text companyman to 500-500. It's all in the description. And thank you for watching.